everyone it's Brittany again from Untitled Thoughts thanks so much for tuning in so for today's video I wanted to take you all through the process of creating a one-of-a-kind fantasy gown using a vintage parachute so I was commissioned by Astrid Adventure she's a good friend of mine to create this fantasy garment for her to wear on photo shoot she specializes in underwater portraiture and photography and things like that so she really wanted a dress that flowed naturally with the water but would also work really well on land she sent me over an initial design concept and i worked on twalling it and fitting it and creating something that was perfect for her. I wanted to show you the entire process from start to finish on how we created this garment. So let's get started. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe I'll get started in a couple minutes <laughs> once she's done being pet. <laughs> All right, so before we get into things, I just wanted to show you all the kind of concept that we came up with. So it's this very flowy fantasy gown with medieval type sleeves and a bustier and a lovely slit up the side of the skirt. And here is a sneak peek of the parachute fabric, which I have tons of. All right, so it's day one of this project. Well, I guess day two. Um, I actually wound up draping the skirt of this dress yesterday. I did not capture any footage on it. Sorry, I kind of just got into it. Um, and today I am going to be sewing up the skirt and the bustier brick. I just have a old sheet that I'm using um, that I purchased at a thrift store. And as for the actual bustier pattern, I will be using my own personal um, Rose Cafe bustier dress by Daria Pattern Making. I already um, fit it pretty well to my size and Astrid and I are actually very similar in size. So I think that will save a lot of time just utilizing what I already have since it's already such a great fit. So I'm just sewing up the bustier pattern as is. I haven't made any modifications other than the ones that have it fit me a little bit better. I plan on making further modifications once the entire bodice has been sewn and I can get it on the dress form. But for now, just stitching away. Uh, I am keeping the bottom of the bodice separate from the cups at this point until I make those alterations. So I'm just going to sew the bottom of the bodice up and then sew the cups up separately. Then I'm going to move over to sewing the skirt pieces together. I don't plan on putting the skirt and the bodice pieces together just yet, but I do want to kind of have an idea of what the entire dress is going to look like when I put it on the mannequin. So I'm just going to continue stitching these seams and pop it on over. Alright, so the dress and bodice are done. Yay! So now I am going to um, put the entire dress on to the mannequin, my mannequin, and just pin it there and kind of mark any adjustments that I see. So this will be the first time I'm getting an idea of how the dress will actually fit. Yeah. All right, so my dress is on the mannequin and it's looking pretty good so far. I am just now marking and cutting that back opening piece. We really wanted to make sure that there was a nice little opening somewhere in the back of the dress. Now that I have one of the pieces cut, I'm going to transfer those same markings onto the other bodice piece or the lining piece. So I'm just going to lay out the one that I cut on my mannequin and pin it to the one that hasn't been cut and then cut out those extra little bits. 
and then I'm going to put the two together right sides together and I'm actually going to sew them as if I was sewing the actual bodice just to see how the seam allowances are all working. So I'm going to pin them together and stitch this entire piece closed everywhere except for the bottom edge and the undercuts. Once everything's been sewn together, I'm just clipping all of my curved seams so that when I flip this right side out and press it, it gives me a really good idea of what the actual under bodice will look like. All right, so I have attached the cups to the actual under part of the bodice and I really like the way that it's looking. So I'm going to mark um, all those changes that I made to the bodice onto the actual pattern pieces. And then I'm going to actually finally attach the bodice and the skirt pieces and try it on my mannequin again, just to see if there are any like changes that need to be made to the pattern itself. So here I am just laying out the two pieces of the bodice pattern that will need adjustments and I'm using the pieces that I cut off of the original bodice to mark my placement and this is what the final pieces look like. All right, so I've already spotted one issue that needs changing, but um, I'm going to still put the dress on the mannequin and see if I can spot any other corrections that I might need to make. <laughs> So now that my dress is on the mannequin, I have a better idea of the corrections that I need to make, which there are just a few. So the first one is right here, the slit opening. I accidentally didn't make the skirt panels wide enough for the front bodice. So what I'm going to have to do is add a bit of width to those. And then another thing that I noticed is the actual skirt itself. The side seams don't want to sit at the actual side of the garment. So what I'm doing is tearing a slit up the back and I'm going to actually insert a set of gussets so that the side seams lay right at the side of the body instead of being pulled backwards. This will also add a lot of volume to the overall skirt. And here is the back of the skirt where I tore a slit and where the gussets will be inserted later on. As you can see, there is a lot of space, so these gussets are going to be quite large. I also decided to try the dress on just to see how it would actually look while being worn on a body. You might notice that I have some elastic straps pinned and that's just because the dress itself does not have any inner structure to the bodice, so it would have fallen down without this but the final dress will have some spiral steel boning and these straps won't be needed. And these are the adjustments that I plan on making to the pattern pieces now that I've seen the dress in action. All right, so I think that's enough for today. I've got my toile all sewn up and my alterations noted. Um, I'm going to come back tomorrow and take apart the entire dress so that I can use those pieces to inform my pattern pieces. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so I have taken apart my entire dress and now I'm just laying it out on some white paper and tracing around each of the pattern pieces. Then I'm going back and truing up all of the lines so I'm making them nice and straight, labeling each pattern piece, double checking to make sure that my measurements are correct, and I'm just going to continue this process until all of my pattern pieces are accounted for, which may be a little while. <laughs> Thank you. 
Once I ran out of paper, I decided to cut out each of the pattern pieces and roll them up to store them a little bit easier so that they didn't take up as much space. And then I moved on to the biggest pattern piece, which was the back skirt panel. Then before I called it a day, I changed locations and I drafted out those two gusset panels and it took quite a bit of time and a lot of moving the page around in order to get this panel correct. But in the end, I'm really happy with how all of the pattern pieces turned out. at how gigantic this piece is. It's basically the same height as I am. <laughs> All right, so it's officially the end of day one. Can you hear my laundry in the back? It's officially the end of day one. I have completely finalized the pattern of the dress and I've got that cut out. So tomorrow I will be able to dive right in, cut out the final fabric, the parachute fabric, which I am super excited about, also super intimidated by. So yeah, tomorrow I will dive right in to cutting out that fabric, um, the parachute fabric, and putting together the entire dress. So if you've gotten this far and you haven't already, please feel free to like and subscribe. I really, really appreciate it. And if you are... And if you're super excited about seeing part two of this series, don't forget to ring the little bell. That way you're notified as soon as that video goes live. Bye. You just run right over here every single time. It's like you think that this is your channel. Are you gonna teach them sewing? Are you gonna teach anyone how to sew? No, I didn't think so. <laughs>